Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be doing a Nexus 7 versus the iPad 3, the 2012 iPad video. I'm going to be giving you a hardware preview and also a software preview. So let's start off with the specs on both of these devices. So the Nexus 7 has a quad-core Tegra 3 processor with 1GB of RAM installed. It has a 4328 milliamp battery. And on the back of the device, you have the 3.5mm headphone jack, the micro USB port, and the speaker grill to get all the sound out of it. On the right side of the device, you'll find the power button up top and the volume up and down buttons. The front of the device is a 7-inch 1280x800 HD display with a front-facing camera of 1.2 megapixels. Now the iPad has the aluminum backing that we've seen from the previous two generations. And and on the bottom of the device is, of course, the speaker grill and the plug-in so you can plug it and charge it and sync. On the top of the device is either your 3G or 4G um, strip for cellular data. And there's also the camera, the power button, and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And on the right side of the device, we will find the SIM tray so you can load in your SIM card. The front of the display is a 9.7 inch. A retina display that Apple has engineered into this thing and there's also a front facing FaceTime camera for all your goodness. This is just a look at what they look like side by side. Let's go ahead and get into some software. So this is just a quick look at the software on these things. The Nexus 7 has Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean and I am running iOS 6 on the iPad. This is Beta 3. So the first thing that everybody wants to know about the new iPad with Beta 3 um, and iOS 6 is Maps. So this is what Maps looks like side by side with Google Maps. So um, on the left, of course, the Nexus 7 has Google Maps. On the right is Apple's Maps. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in on this lake here and some roads. And you can tell the difference between the different map applications that Apple and Google has built. Um, Apple is obviously going away from Google Maps and they're engineering and designing their own map systems with TomTom. Tom. So it's just giving you a quick look at the detail and the different looks of the two mapping systems on each devices. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at both of the default browsers built into the, both of these devices. So on the Nexus 7, Google Chrome is built in. And on the Apple iPad, iOS 6 has Safari, which it's also had for all the other versions. Just giving you a quick look at the same website that I've loaded up here on both of the devices. So the iPad obviously has a really beautiful looking website. The Nexus 7 has, it looks like a mobile version of just a normal uh, Android or mobile phone uh, website there so it looks a lot better on the iPad but let's go ahead and try a different website here it's also going to be a speed test between the two browsers and look at that Google Chrome is amazingly fast I don't know if it was in the background at some point I didn't clear the cache or anything but um, there's just a look at the web browsers on the devices and we're going to go ahead and zoom in and pan around here and see uh, what the size difference looks like of course the Nexus 7 is a smaller screen but they both look good on each device, both fast and fast right, and fluid. So now I'm just going to do a Google Voice versus Siri test. And now keep in mind that the iPad is on iOS 6 Beta 3. So this is going to be just a demonstration of beta software for now on the iPad. But on Google Voice, um, this is Android Jelly Bean 4.1.1. So let's go ahead and get this started. So to activate Google Voice, we just click here and then scroll up to Google. And then on Google, or for Siri, we just hold it like this. So let's go ahead and stop that for a second. All right, so let's go ahead and say something to both of these devices and see not if listening to anything. and see if they will uh, work the way they're supposed to. So let's go ahead and start with something simple. Two plus two. The answer is four. This might answer your question. Alright, so they both got them right. Um, Google Voice was definitely faster than Siri was. And you can tell that on the Nexus 7, it fills up the whole screen here. And Siri um, only covers up this tiny little area here. So that's the main difference between um, the size of Siri and Google Voice on each. So uh, let's try another one here. Is Siri or Google Voice better? Let me think about that. If you like, I can search the web for, is Siri or Google Voice better? So Google Voice is obviously run by Google, so you know it pulls up Google straight away. It doesn't even have to launch into a browser because it is right here. Um, let's go ahead and try a couple more more uh, difficult ones that we can go ahead and try. How much wood would a wood chuck chuck if a wood chuck could chuck wood? 42 cords of wood, to be exact. Everyone knows that. 
Okay, so Siri has obviously a sense of humor, and Google Voice pulls up this um, Google search because it doesn't really seem to talk back to you. It mostly just answers your question. That's something that I um, I noticed with the uh, main differences between Siri and Google Voice. It doesn't really talk to you, but Siri, obviously, you can have a full conversation with it. So let's go ahead and try something else here. Tell me a joke. Let me think. Nope, can't think of one. So there you go, there's another demonstration of Siri talking back to you in Google Voice, just pulling up um, Google web searches for simple questions like that. We can try other stuff too, like create a timer for 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes and counting. All right, so um, it looks like Google Voice actually screwed that up. It says critter timer for 10 minutes and Siri obviously worked pretty well and um, I am sitting pretty far away from these devices so that gives you a good idea of how both of the smart assistants on these devices work Siri was pretty well it talks back to you and Google Voice obviously is tied in well into Google both pretty good for um, their own software so guys let's jump to the next part both of these devices have their dedicated app store the Nexus 7 has the Google Play Store and the Apple iPad has Apple's App Store now the quality of the apps on each is uh, relatively good it seems like the Nexus 7 there's lots of phone based applications and the iPad has apps dedicated to the iPad screen and the tablet um, interface multitasking is handled very differently on each device on the Google Nexus 7 you have a preview of all your open applications in the Apple iPad there's just icons there um, the Nexus 7 looks really beautiful and all you have to do is swipe away to delete one and on the iPad you have to hold and then select that minus button to get rid of an app um, both of these have notification centers obviously um, Apple is pretty new to this in iOS 5 Android's been using that for a while here's just a quick look at each Customization on both of these devices is greatly different because Apple does not like to give you any customization options at all except for moving around and creating folders basically on your home screen. But on the Android that's very different. You can add widgets, you can add things wherever you want. You can have these different home screens with big pictures and all this crazy stuff going on. And I actually really like the, um, the way Android does it with all the widgets. This is my first Android device and I really do enjoy it a lot. Alright guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I showed you some hardware, the specifications on each, and I also showed you some software and demonstrations on both of the devices. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos. I am giving away this Nexus 7, so if you want that, stay tuned and subscribe to be a lucky winner. Thanks guys for watching.